Have you ever wondered what your life would be like without copper? Don't worry, it's not something most people spend a lot of time thinking about. But the fact is that without this basic element, you'd be stuck with no running water, no phone, no computer, and no electricity for that matter. Copper makes solutions to important issues possible. Water quality, renewability, health care, and more. Copper, and the other essential elements that come from this mine, make all sorts of human pioneering and progress possible. In other words, without copper, your life would be downright primitive. So now that you know how important copper is, let's talk about how it's made. Or to be more accurate, let's talk about how it goes from this, a basic element mixed in with a bunch of other minerals and garden variety rock, to this, 99.99% pure copper cathodes manufacturers use to make that long list of stuff you depend on every day. The whole process starts with monster machines and high explosives. At the Bingham Canyon mine, teams of blasting experts drill 12-inch diameter holes 56 feet into solid rock, fill the holes with about 1,200 pounds of high explosives, and boom! Solid rock instantly becomes loose rock. In fact, every single day, blasting crews drill and blast about 160 of these holes to create 500,000 tons of new blasted ore. So exactly how much is 500,000 tons? Well, a humpback whale, one of the world's largest animals, weighs about 50 tons, which means you'd need about 10,000 of them to balance the scales. So how does Kennecott deal with this nearly inconceivable volume of blasted rock? Well, the simple answer is that you pick it up with giant shovels that can carry 100 tons in a single scoop and dump it into massive haulers. These trucks are capable of hauling 320 tons, or about six whales, and are about the same size as an average two-story house. These huge hauling machines carry the blasted rock, which contains minerals called ore, out of the mine and drop it into one of the world's largest rock crushers. This giant crusher turns the big car-sized chunks of loose ore into more manageable, basketball-sized rocks at the rate of about 10,000 tons per hour, and then drops the the crushed ore onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor system, which is basically a giant moving sidewalk for rocks, carries the ore through a three-mile tunnel, then continues up hills, down hills, and past six transfer stations until it reaches the Kennecott grinding facility. This five-mile trip takes about 29 minutes. If only rocks could appreciate the fun of traveling five miles on a moving sidewalk. When it reaches the grinding facility, the ore runs through a series of giant rotating mills. This grinds the basketball-sized rocks into a fine powder. After all that blasting, hauling, crushing, conveying, and grinding, the copper is finally ready to be separated from all the other minerals and materials that surround it. This is also where the process switches from brute force to applied chemistry. The finely ground ore is poured into flotation cells and mixed with exactly the right amounts of water, air, and chemicals. This causes all of the copper-bearing minerals to cling to air bubbles and take a free ride to the top of the flotation cell. The result is a liquid material called copper concentrate, which is now about 28% pure copper. This concentrate is pumped 17 miles through a long pipe to a filtering facility and dumped into a big storage tank. At the filtering plant, the concentrate is pressed, filtered, and dried in a massive rotating dryer. After it's done, the material looks a lot like coffee grounds. This powder goes into a large, very hot flash furnace, which causes the dried concentrate to melt and turn into a molten metal called matte copper. During this process, sulfur gases burn off and are then captured and cleaned. A combination of iron and silica rises to the top, and the heavier copper mat sinks to the bottom. This mat, which is now about 70% pure copper, is collected, cooled, and sent through yet another series of furnaces. This burns off most of the remaining impurities and leaves us with molten copper that's about 99% pure. This nearly pure copper is poured into 700-pound copper plates called anodes and left to cool. 99% pure copper is good, but getting to 99.99% takes a little extra molecular mojo. 
The anodes are shipped to a final tank house facility, where they're sandwiched between stainless steel plates and loaded into big square tanks that are designed to conduct electricity. The tanks are filled with an electrolytic solution that creates positive and negative electrical currents, just like the world's biggest car battery. This current causes the pure copper ions to jump to the stainless steel plates. It's a pretty strong attraction. The result is a 99.99% pure copper cathode. These cathodes are stripped away from the stainless steel plates, corrugated, strapped together into 5,000 pound bundles, and whisked away to their final destinations. And finally, they're turned into cell phones, computer components, copper pipes, copper wire, and many other things that make our modern lives possible. That's the amazing story of how we take copper from this to this. 99.99% pure copper. It's not easy, but when you stop and think about what our lives would be like without copper, it's worth it.